On top of a cliff near the ocean, Jane decides it's time for her to end things. A few days later, Jane's best friend Olivia is trying to go through her usual routine without letting the loss of a loved one affect her. She's a very ambitious girl that works hard in every class, exercises every morning, helps with Joseph's charity, is the captain of the debate club, and dreams of going to Stanford University. The stress caused by the combo of worrying over college applications and too much work without a break to deal with her grief is starting to take a toll on her, especially since she hasn't talked to her neighbor Izzy for a while. Izzy used to be besties with Jane and Olivia, but months ago she began to distance herself from the other two, meaning Olivia had to handle the news of Jane's death alone. At school, Olivia refuses to be seen as weak and prefers to ignore all the whispering other students do about her, not wanting to admit they affect her more than she lets on. One afternoon, Olivia goes to see counselor Billings to ask why only two students from her school per year are chosen by Stanford, to which Billings explains it's only an average and it shouldn't be taken seriously. She worries about Olivia and how she's obsessing about this so much that she went as far as looking at past year's acceptance rates, but Olivia thinks it's all part of the game. Sometime later, Olivia guides the debate club through another victory in the regional championship. Mr. Richardson is very proud as his club's captain, and takes the chance to introduce Olivia to Camille, a student that just transferred to their school and will be joining the club. Olivia isn't in the mood to deal with new people but pretends to be welcoming for the sake of the team. After sending her application to Stanford, Olivia can't help refreshing the website over and over, but she finally admits obsessing over it won't help and goes to bed. But instead of sleeping, she looks up Camille on social media and gets jealous of all the kind comments she has from friends. The next day between classes, Olivia checks the Stanford website on her phone and is devastated to learn her application has been deferred. This news is starting to push her into a breakdown that she bottles up and causes her to suddenly see Jane in the middle of the corridor. Her body can't take all these sudden emotional punches anymore, and Olivia ends up in the bathroom throwing up. Camille is in the bathroom as well, and while she doesn't say anything, Olivia feels like karma is making fun of her. Afterward, Olivia goes to see Billings and finally allows herself to cry. Billings doesn't want Olivia to think of this as the end of the world and wishes to guide her to her grief, but as soon as she mentions the possibility of sending a personal appeal to Stanford's administration board, Olivia takes that as her next step and leaves. Later when she goes to debate club, she finds she isn't the first one as usual, Camille is already there chatting with Richardson. To make matters worse, Richardson pairs Olivia and Camille up for practice. Olivia just wants to go over their arguments, but she gets extra irritated when Camille offers her help with correcting what Olivia wrote because she has experience going to nationals and Olivia doesn't. Camille thinks the team would benefit from her leadership skill too, and this comment triggers an anxiety attack in Olivia that makes her pass out. When she wakes up a moment later, Olivia can see Jane standing around again, but another bad news is coming. Richardson can see she isn't doing well and needs to rest, so she won't be coming to this weekend's tournament. Incredibly frustrated, Olivia rushes to her car to yell her anger out. Izzy sees her and in her worry, she pushes herself to offer Olivia a ride. When they get home, Olivia tries to get out of the car after a quick thanks, but Izzy wants to do better and hugs her while crying and admitting she misses Jane too. The following day at school, Olivia overhears Camille saying that she's filling in as captain this weekend, but she's pretty sure Richardson's going to make it permanent because Olivia's too sick to function. Anxiety starts getting to Olivia again, causing her to see Jane in the mirror, but before she can think too hard about it she's surprisingly approached by Izzy, who wonders if Olivia needs a ride again. She doesn't, but Olivia can't let the opportunity pass and asks Izzy to grab a coffee with her like in the old times. The girls chat for a while and Olivia takes the chance to rant about Camille, prompting Izzy to Google her. This is how they discover Camille was transferred because in her old school, she framed her teacher to make it look like he was harassing her. Izzy thinks Olivia should use this info to blackmail Camille and make her back off, but Olivia thinks that would be crossing a line. During the weekend, Olivia goes to watch the debate competition and gets so irritated by Camille's brilliant performance that she changes her mind about exposing her. She goes to see Izzy and shows her that she's found Camille's court order, but she isn't sure how to proceed without getting in trouble. Izzy proposes making an anonymous account on Connect, the social media platform everyone uses, and Olivia loves the idea. However a moment of sadness takes over them when Izzy grabs her old computer and discovers Jane left her account logged in the last time she came over. After the initial shock passes, Olivia proposes to use Jane's account to do this since it would mess with Camille's head even more, and Izzy accepts after considering the fact Jane would probably love this kind of prank. They start by sending Camille a private message, showing the screenshot of the court order and accusing her of doing to Richardson the same thing she did in her last school. The girls even add Jane's account to their phone so that they can continue to bother Camille through DMs in between classes. Sometime later, Camille is called to the principal's office. This can't be a coincidence, and when the girls check social media, they find Camille's profile gone. Olivia feels a bit guilty, but Izzy reminds her this is exactly what she wanted, prompting Olivia to go to see Richardson with an innocent act as she apologizes for how she acted last week, pretending she would be okay to share leadership with Camille. Richardson is impressed by her maturity but has to inform her Camille has transferred again. 
Pleased by this turn of events, Olivia finishes her appeal letter and shows it to Billings, who tells her the letter is too plain and not personal enough. This instantly destroys Olivia's good mood, which only gets worse when later Mrs. West tells the entire class that all their papers were disappointing. Later in the afternoon, Olivia asks Izzy to hang out because she's come up with an idea, using Jane's account may be their answer to dealing with Mrs. West. Izzy wonders if going for a teacher next wouldn't be too much, but Olivia reminds her Jane hated West too and she's always been mean to students, so she deserves to be exposed. The next day, Mrs. West starts the class using a screen that gets hacked by Izzy, who posts silly messages and West's pictures from social media while telling her she has a sad life. The entire class begins laughing and West loses her mind, checking every student's computer to find the prankster as she calls them names. Olivia records the whole deal with her phone, including the moment when West accidentally hits a student with her elbow. The girls post the video on Jane's account and it immediately goes viral, causing West to end up in a scandal and delete her account too. The following morning, Olivia watches with satisfaction Wes leave the school with her things because she's been fired. The next time she sees Jane in the corridor, she isn't scared anymore, because she thinks her friend is proud. When Principal Rhodes comes to the classroom to ask for details about what happened, Olivia tells her everyone saw the same thing. The prank was rude but harmless, so West overreacted in quite a scary way. Later, Olivia and Izzy discover Jane's account has gained an insane amount of followers, which would have made Jane very happy. The idea of this much power is incredibly exhilarating, and the girls decide to use Jane's account to post about a bunch of things they see in school every day, embarrassing and cyberbullying random students by using the ghost of their dead friend. Things only get weird when a post on Jane's account appears that neither Izzy nor Olivia remembers making, but since both swear they never gave anyone the password, they blame it on a moment of distraction. Sometime later, Olivia finds Izzy hanging up a Stanford flag because she was accepted by them. Izzy feels bad that she could get in but Olivia didn't, but Olivia swears it's fine. As soon as Izzy is gone though, Olivia starts crying and sees Jane appear to pull the flag down. Olivia immediately puts it back up, but this moment can't leave her mind, and when the next debate competition comes, she's too anxious to perform well and they lose. In the evening, Izzy visits Olivia with a bottle of wine. After hanging out for a while, Izzy confesses she came to ask Olivia to come to a party with her because she needs moral support since the party is thrown at her ex's house. Olivia accepts after some hesitance, and as soon as they arrive there, they notice Izzy's ex has already moved on and is flirting with Josa, who everyone thinks is niceness incarnate. Izzy doesn't agree, she thinks Josa is always flirting with everyone, including taken boys, and that she secretly has an addiction problem. When Josa tries to say hi to Olivia, Izzy gets jealous and rudely sends her away before dragging Olivia to the bathroom to rant about her. To Olivia's shock, Izzy has also brought some illegal junk, and Olivia convinces her not to use it by proposing to put it in Josa's drink, that way everyone will think she isn't that innocent. Izzy loves the idea and puts the junk in a bottle of juice that she brings to Josa with a fake apology, proposing a toast to make her drink. The juice allows Josa to loosen up and dance with everyone like crazy. When the girls finally take a break, Olivia admits to Izzy this is the happiest she's been in months, and Izzy apologizes for having avoided Olivia and Jane for a while. Both of them are delighted to be friends again, but this cute little moment is interrupted when Josa reacts badly to the juice and passes out. Among the worried crowd, Olivia swears she can see Jane recording it all. Some hours later, Olivia's phone explodes with notifications because the video of Josa passing out is going viral on Jane's account. Both Olivia and Izzy swear they didn't post it, in fact, neither of them remembers even recording it. Olivia thinks they shouldn't post any more until this blows over, but Izzy has had enough and deletes Jane's profile. When Olivia returns home, she ignores her parents' worry and flees to her room, where she can see Jane sitting at her computer. The next morning, Izzy and Olivia notice someone has somehow reactivated Jane's account, they also learn nobody in the school believes Josa's drink had something in it, they think she did it to herself. Izzy tries to close Jane's account again, but no matter how hard she tries, it keeps coming back, thus Olivia asks her to ignore it and work on their story so they match. When Rhodes asks Olivia to come to her office for some questions, she swears she didn't see anything strange at the party and that she hasn't interacted with Jane's account since she died, a lie that is encouraged by Jane appearing in the office asking her for secrecy. On her way out, Olivia overhears Rhodes talking to a computer expert on the phone, asking them to get the IP addresses behind Jane's account. Thinking this may be what finally brings her down, Olivia runs out of the building in tears, and she can't help seeing Jane's face on every person outside before passing out. Izzy finds her and takes her to her house to help her recover, then Olivia takes the chance to tell her about the IP hunt, which prompts Izzy to think they should come clean to hopefully keep the scandal down. Olivia refuses because she thinks coming clean will make her lose her chances at Stanford, and comes up with an idea, she goes to Izzy's dad's office to check the router with a VPN site, only to find a bunch of Stanford merch that makes her wonder if Izzy got in thanks to knowing the right people. When Izzy finds her, Olivia's irritation makes her lie and tell her there's nothing to worry about because she's confirmed her parents use a VPN service, so their IPs are safe. 
The following day, Olivia decides to go for coffee and bumps into Camille, who wants a moment to apologize for her attitude during the club meetings. When she transferred she hadn't been in a good mental state because in her previous school, a teacher harassed her, but the faculty covered it all up and made it look like her fault. Guilt suddenly overwhelms Olivia and makes her see Jane again, so she rushes to hide in the bathroom to have a breakdown as she now sees Jane in her own reflection, causing her to break the mirror in anger. When she returns home, Olivia deletes all the posts she made on Jane's account while Jane watches her. The next day, Izzy approaches Olivia to mention Josa got into Stanford, making her wonder if Olivia didn't pull the party trick on purpose. Olivia swears she didn't, and after Izzy is gone, she takes out her computer to write an email to Rhodes saying Izzy is behind Jane's account. However she can't bring herself to send it and abandons the idea. In the afternoon, Olivia is getting ready for another debate competition when she gets a call from Izzy, who is furious because she's learned the VPN excuse had been a lie and noticed Olivia deleted all of Jane's posts. This makes her think Olivia is planning to blame her for everything, so Izzy will call Rhodes and confess first. Refusing to be caught, Olivia decides to drive all the way to Izzy's to try to convince her not to confess, but Izzy's done with her, accusing her of hiding behind Jane's ghost instead of dealing with her problems. When Izzy takes out her phone to call Rhodes, Olivia jumps on her to stop her, and the girls end up falling into the pool to fight over the device. Olivia's obsession with winning makes her push Izzy so hard underwater that the poor girl ends up drowning. While she cries her heart out in grief, Olivia's smartwatch reminds her of the incoming competition, so she puts herself together and comes up with a plan. After putting two bricks in Izzy's pockets, Olivia leaves her body in the middle of the pool to make it look like she did it herself. Then she showers and changes into a dress she grabs from Izzy's closet, always making sure to clean up any proof of her presence in the house. Lastly, she grabs Izzy's computer and posts on her account, making it look like Izzy's confessing she's been using Jane's account and that understanding the harm she's caused has made her end things. With all that done, Olivia rushes back to the competition, where she absolutely crushes her opponents and the team earns a place in nationals. While they're celebrating, they find out about Izzy through social media, and Olivia is sent home to talk to the police. The officers believe her story and her fake tears, and when she's asked about the talk Izzy gave her a few hours ago, Olivia pretends her friend had only wanted to wish her good luck. A few days later, Olivia finally finishes her appeal letter for Stanford using her friendship with Izzy as a sob story and the source of her inspiration as a person, saying she wants to get into college to study mental health and help people that suffer like her two dead friends. During the next debate competition, Olivia can see Jane in the public with a smile that shows she's proud she's gotten what she wanted. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.